Hey YouTube. Okay, uh, some of y'all are expecting, uh, maybe even anticipating, like the kitty cat that ate the cheese. You got baited breath. Uh, you're anticipating me getting into a video where I jump in the middle of controversy one more time, same way I did with the great bushcraft haversack controversy of 2023. But you know in that video that I like to have my ducks in a row, okay? And the controversy I was jumping in had a long row of ducks, and one duck was out of the row. However, through the uh, magic of the rabbit holes, I found someone contacted me and said, I might have your answer. And he gave me another contact. We'll outline that when we do the video uh, next week. Hopefully all the emails come back and that duck will get in the row. Okay. Boy, I'm good with metaphors, ain't I? Okay. What follows now is a video that I was going to release at the same time. Okay. That has to do with research sources for the second half of the 20th century as far as the, the uh, history of gear is concerned. Okay, now uh, before we get into the video, let me do my commercials, please. Uh, first off, if you find any part of this video entertaining, uh, educational, if, if you are pleased at all with what you see, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and be sure to hit that notification button. That's something I learned the other day is if you don't hit that notification button, especially if you are a member, you will not get notified of the next video and members will not be notified that the next members only video has been uh, posted. Which brings us to membership in this uh, channel. Now, uh, what membership is, it's it's like Patreon, where, where you can tell me, you can help me uh, move the channel along, tell me I'm doing a good job, and you may be able to save the world from me having to start an OnlyFans channel if you subscribe. Now, that might be enough to get you to hit that Join button. Uh, the Join button can be found in two places. One is down below the video. And the other is uh, up in the upper right-hand corner of my home page. Now, if you don't want to become a member, but you still want to keep the world from seeing my uh, boyish good looks and men manly figure uh, displayed for all to see on OnlyFans, well, you can go to my store uh, and uh, buy some of the tchotchkes, gimcracks, doodads, and falderall that I have for sale there. The design of the week that we uh, that I'm putting up is one I call Scenic Overlook. And it's of a young couple, very much in love, standing on a uh, precipice, looking out over a, a green valley. There's a reason why we are all out there backpacking, is to get out there and stand on that rock and look and a few hundred square miles of God's creation. So, like I said, if you want, if you want to save the world, please either become a member, or buy a coffee cup, or one of my uh, uh, various other things on the store, or you could purchase my uh, collector's guide for Kelty backpacks. There, it's in my store, but there is a direct link to that down below uh, in the comments. Also in the comments are links to all of the sources that I am going to mention in this video. Okay? All right. Let's listen to the old man talk. Okay. Up until this point in the history of Camping Gear series, uh, you may have heard me say once or twice 
that part of the problem with tracing the history of camping gear is there isn't a whole lot of scholarship. Uh, there's not a whole lot of uh, websites, very few books at all dedicated to the history of camping gear. Okay, As we get into the World War II and post-war period, we are getting to the point where we have people alive today who either knew some of these people or who actually participated in the things that we're going to be discussing. Okay, so therefore there's a lot of good uh, scholarship. Uh, none of it so far, as I have found, despite everybody's best efforts, there is no one good place to go that examines the whole thing. Okay, everybody's got their area of expertise and quite frankly everybody's limited by the fact, as I am, that this is a second job and it doesn't pay much. Okay, so a lot of people don't have enough time to participate. But, just like this channel, this channel is not designed to give you 100% of the information. Okay, this channel is designed to be a springboard, an inspiration for you to do your own research and perhaps uncover some things that the rest of us have not. Okay, so what I'm going to do right now is, uh, in this video is give you a rundown of the uh, research assets I use to go down the various rabbit holes. I have starting places. Sometimes it gives me the basic information and I will be able to transmit it to you. Other times they give me a nugget and I'm able to trace that nugget down and get to the mother load, or at least a decent vein of ore. Golly, I thought I was going to mix a metaphor there for a second, but I stuck with the mining thing. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to post these links uh, down below in the comments so you can go to them and you should bookmark them if you are at all interested in the history of gear. Unless you want to think that I'm the, you know, absolute end-all be-all expert and just believe everything I say, okay? I don't recommend doing that, but hey, if you want to, eh. Okay, the first site. Uh, the guy who actually inspired me on this project Okay, I corresponded with him. Uh, he gave me uh, the contact information for uh, Richard Kelty, uh, the son of Dick Kelty, the founder of the Kelty uh, company that made the best backpack in the world. Uh, this, is, this is a site run by Bruce Johnson, okay, and it's called The History of Gear. And he concentrates mainly on the what we're all going to be calling the backpacking revolution of the late 1960s and early 1970s. Now, Bruce got into this game a whole lot earlier than I did, and he was able to talk to a number of these guys and interview them, guys like Jerry Cunningham and Andy Drollinger and a few others, names you're going to hear uh, in the future, you know, the, the next 10 or 12 videos. Uh, go to that site read everything he's got, okay? It's a great site, it's the best place to start, okay? And, and the rest of it, I, that, I'll give you that one at the top, the rest of these are not in any particular order, okay? Another good one is the Outdoor Industry Underground, uh, otherwise known as Out in Under, okay? Uh, this is a collection of stories written by uh, original participants in the design and development of, of a number of innovative uh, uh, pieces of camping gear, some of which I will be discussing, others which I don't think are as important as other people do. Okay? Check that one out. Great site. Uh, Bruce Johnson also posts there. Uh, the next one is uh, a, a website called Compass or Outdoor Innovate. Uh, this is a good site. They've got a great timeline uh, that you can follow 
for the development of gear, and I've gotten some some good stuff from them just just following that timeline and then chasing down the thing he has in the timeline there uh, so that I can uh, present a video to you. One of the best things on the internet that we have available to us for studying the backpacking revolution is the uh, back issues of Backpacker magazine. The publishers of Backpacking Magazine, uh, right now Backpacking Magazine is an online only magazine, okay? And what they did was they posted back issues, all of their back issues, all of the back issues starting in about 1975. I'll post that right down here, okay? But every issue of Backpacker Magazine is available to you through Google Books, okay? Uh, that's linked down below. Uh, the best thing I have found, uh, the best use for Backpacker Magazine is looking at the advertising, advertisements and gear reviews, okay? A lot of good pictures and stuff there, but it, that, is, that is essential. That is something you should have in your book, bookmarks. Now, one of the things I have talked about is the, the lack of, of scholarship, okay? But the University of Utah has got a fantastic outdoor product uh, career path, degree path, for outdoor product design and development. As part of that effort, uh, their library has uh, a collection of books and magazines, uh, photographs, and the papers of some of the prominent guys uh, in the industry. Uh, unfortunately, they don't have the staff to scan and digitize and post everything they have. They've got a fantastic collection of catalogs, but right now all they can post is the covers. But it's still fantastic place to go to get started down a rabbit hole, okay? Uh, that is posted below. Now the other sites I use very regularly is Google Books. I find that if I have a subject, uh, uh, the Metropolitan uh, Camp Goods, Camping Goods, uh, bivy bag that I did early on in the history of gear. I was able to go to magazines of the period using Google Books, using that search term. The comp usually what I do is I do the company name and their address, searching Google Books and the magazines from the period, from the early camping period, because generally that's pretty much all we've got is period magazines. Uh, but I use Google Books that way uh, to find advertisements and reviews of some of the older stuff. But it'll work for newer stuff as well. Uh, Internet Archive, uh, that is another, it's very similar to Google Books. Uh, I think you can probably find the same information in Internet Archive that you can in Google Books. I just find Google Books a little bit easier to navigate. That's just me. I'm an old man. My, my computer uh, education stopped when the youngest teenager joined the Air Force about 15 years ago. Another good one uh, is called Vertical Archaeology. Now, this is about mountaineering equipment, and you might think that, well, you know, we're backpackers and campers. What are we looking at mountaineering equipment? Well, one of the things I hope to get across in the World War II and post-World War II period is that uh, backpacking in particular and camping owes more, in my opinion, to the sport of mountaineering than it does to uh, gear manufacturers and developers for camping gear. Okay, most of the good backpacking in particular, stuff that we've got, came out originally as mountaineering equipment and was adapted for use because the needs of the mountaineers are similar to the needs of backpackers. We'll get more into that. 
the last one is one that I, I kind of like. It's, it's, it's nostalgic. It's only really good for researching Jerry Cunningham. But since I think uh, that he is the most important person in the history of camping gear, uh, his daughter has a long-lost blog called uh, Penny's Tuppets. And there are a couple of posts of her dad, dad's time in the 10th Mountain Division uh, during World War II. So that's a good place to go if you just want to get a feel for Jerry Cunningham, the man. Uh, and I do highly recommend researching Jerry Cunningham. One of the things I'm going to be bringing out that we'll be talking about is a book that was uh, had a lot of impact on my life. Okay, and this one here, uh, written by Jerry Cunningham in uh, 1952, I believe, the year I was born, uh, 1959. I was six years old. Okay, this is lightweight camping gear, lightweight camping equipment, and how to make it. Okay. The great thing about this book is many of the designs that Jerry sold in his company, in his catalog, he tells you how to make it here. What Jerry wanted was you to get the gear. He didn't care if you made it. He didn't care if you made it. He made money on it. We'll be talking about this when we talk about a few other things as well. Okay, all right. So this is kind of a short video. Uh, I had originally intended to uh, release this at the same time as another video. However, in researching that video, I came across something. I've got some emails out. I'm waiting for some answers. So instead of releasing both of them, both of these videos at the same time, I'm just releasing this one by itself. That other video will come out next week. Okay? Oh, oh, oh. One thing, I, one thing I forgot to mention, I don't know why I did. Uh, there's another, there's an excellent Facebook group called Vintage Backpacking. That will be linked below. Uh, many of the guys that are instrumental in the, some of these websites I talked about, they're on this uh, Vintage Backpacking Facebook group. Uh, you might be able to ask uh, some questions and the guy will answer it. Okay? All right. Oh, golly, 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 golly. This is what you get for watching videos of an old guy. Okay? I forgot something else. Something that uh, is important to me uh, in my research, but may not be for you, because this is a pay-to-play site. This is newspapers.com. Uh, subscription cost me, I think, about $75 a year. I think it's worth it. You might not. But I am, uh, it, it is particularly helpful in me uh, in the older portions, the pre-World War II part of the history of gear. Uh, but it's just as important uh, for the post-World War II uh, period. I can find obituaries or uh, stories written uh, about the, the, the people and the products involved that were part of a media campaign put on by the company, that kind of thing. I can find those in newspapers.com as well. Uh, occasionally they have, uh, you know, like a seven day uh, free period and if you get something that you're really, really, really interested in, you might take advantage of that. But I do pay for that subscription and uh, I don't recommend you do it. Uh, you know, it's up to you, uh, but I like it. Okay, I think I've remembered everything now. If I didn't, I, I, I'll shoot an intro, and I'll tell you in the intro, okay? Golly, it's hell being old. All right, we'll see you down the trail. Thank you.